this entitled mom thinks she has the right to live wherever she wants, including someone else's living room. How will this poor person evict this crazy entitled mom? Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. This isn't my story, but one from a co-worker of mine. Sadly, I've heard many stories that are quite similar to this one, and it kind of makes me lose faith in humanity. I'm thankful it never happened to me, because I don't think I could have reacted professionally. At Disney World, we have quite a few Make-A-Wish families. If you're not familiar with Make-A-Wish, it's an organization that grants wishes to very sick children. These kids are often terminally ill, and it breaks my heart every time they come to visit the characters. Everyone in the room gets very emotional. Make-A-Wish families get special treatment in the parks, as they should. These kids usually cannot wait in long lines, so if you have a Make-A-Wish pass, you have a fast pass to everything. For rides, it's easy. Just send the family through the fast pass line. For characters, it can get a bit tricky. We have some characters that meet outside and therefore don't have a fast pass line. There's one queue and you can see how many people are in front of you since there aren't any twisty queue lines that just go through a building. In this case, Make-A-Wish families just come up to the character attendant, the person that takes care of the character, aka me, and shows us their special pass. We go over to the next family in the regular line, inform them that the Make-A-Wish family is going to cut in front of them, and after they're done, that next family will get their turn. Usually people are hot and sweaty and tired, but they get it, and they wave me away with a quick, oh it's no problem. Sometimes their kids get a bit frustrated because they don't understand why the Make-A-Wish get to cut in front, but the parents explain that they're doing a good deed by letting a really sick kid go first. Sometimes people get huffy, but I ignore them. They'll be fine to wait another minute. Occasionally, people get upset because they don't know what Make-A-Wish means, but it's oftentimes pretty obvious that the child is very sick, so people can put two and two together with context clues and we can always explain if they still don't get it. But for the most part, American families have heard of Make-A-Wish and know what it means. However, people can still get really, really mad. I had a friend who was a character attending with Princess Aurora who saw a Make-A-Wish family, let the next family in line know what was going on, and was shocked to hear the entitled dad's response. Sorry sir, this Make-A-Wish family is going to go first. Thank you for your patience. Are you kidding me? We've been waiting here forever! This is ridiculous! Sorry sir, my friend shot him a look and turned away to focus on the Make-A-Wish family. Edie pouts like a child. Wow, I wish my kid had a disease so he could cut all the lines, he muttered under his breath, probably louder than he intended to. Everyone froze. Princess Aurora, my friend who was working, the family behind Edie, and the Make-A-Wish family all turned to stare at ED. Aurora was ticked and said something to the effect of, well that wasn't a very princely thing to say, before turning her attention to the Make-A-Wish little girl. Her mum looked like she was going to cry. My friend barely kept his composure, went right over to the ED and said, I bet our friends over here would give anything to be in your shoes, don't you think? The family behind ED grumbled about him being rude and horrible. ED knew he had put his foot in his mouth. His daughter was oblivious to the whole thing, thankfully. As she was quietly playing with her Barbie and barely even blinked when she was told that she'd have to wait a bit longer to see Aurora. During their turn, Aurora was cool towards ED, but great with the daughter. They had a long talk about how a real princess is kind and patient and compassionate towards others. ED slunk away, and I hope he learned from his behavior. It's pretty sad when you're so involved in your own little bubble that you think that your pain of waiting in line for a long time is somehow worse than a terminally ill kid. At least he had just enough self-awareness there to realize that he'd made a mistake, and he's lucky that his daughter was oblivious to what he said, or else that could change how she views her father for the rest of her life. The background. For my first semester in uni, I had decided to live in dorms because they were so close to campus and my scholarship would cover a portion of the housing. These dorms were suite style, so they had five bedrooms with two people in each room, and we all shared a common area in the center. The EK in this story was the only one who knew her roommate beforehand. They moved here from Texas together. The cast. K is dorm mate, M is K's roommate, EM, K squatter mum, me, Mystic Enigma, RA resident assistant. So the first day of check-in was absolutely insane. With 10 students in each room, we had 80 people on each floor, and the RA had to check in each person individually, so we really didn't get the time to know each other between the line and unpacking. Everyone's parents were there to help them move and to say goodbye. 
our floor was all freshmen. Because of this, nobody really thought twice about EM still being there at that night. My roommate and I went to the opening ceremonies and didn't get home until probably 1am and were really surprised to see EM asleep on the couch. We rubbed it off thinking her flight back to Texas may not be until the next day and just went to bed. That morning, we woke up to the most delicious smell of bacon omelettes and waffles. Everyone slowly filed out of their rooms thinking one of our dorm mates had made us food before our first day of class. Boy were we wrong. EM had gone through the fridge and the cupboards, taking ingredients from wherever she could find, meaning it was our food. As a student with no job at that point, the food she took from me and my other roommates was supposed to last the first couple of weeks of school until we could get a job or parents sent some money. All of us were very obviously annoyed, but she seemed completely oblivious to the dirty looks. EM and K were just munching away while their dishes and mess were piled all over the counter. Eventually M walks out and they excitedly tell her that they made breakfast for her too. We were all dumbfounded, but kept quiet as we hurried to eat cereal or toast. My classes were in the afternoon, so I didn't get back from campus until around 4.30. I was expecting the mess to be cleaned and EM to be gone, but as I walked in, the counters were still covered in their dishes and EM, K and M were playing on my Xbox. I cleared my throat to get their attention. All I got was a side glance from M, who looked like she'd been caught doing something really bad. As I peered farther over the couch, I realized that they went through all of my text box to set up my Xbox, leaving everything from my Wii to all of my movies scattered on the ground. I was absolutely livid and went and unplugged the Xbox in the middle of their game. This made EM completely lose it. You brat, we were in the middle of something. Yeah, in the middle of my stuff. I expect you to put it all away. After hearing that Kay tried to get up and start clearing my stuff, she couldn't even get all the way off the couch before EM tugged her back down. Kay doesn't listen to you, she listens to me. Maybe ask before assuming you're in charge. I didn't feel the need to deal with more of this BS, so I gathered all my things and shoved them in my room. Fast forward two weeks, and we have our floor meeting with the RA. He explains certain rules like when quiet hours are, and that a guest can only stay two nights consecutively. At this point, EM had fully turned our living room into her bedroom by putting sheets on the couch and the whole nine yards. K and M shared a glance and ran back to our dorm. The second the meeting was over, I marched up to the RA and told him that someone has had a guest since the first day of class. He looks absolutely dumbfounded as I lead him to our dorm. When we walk in, K and M are sitting on the couch as if nothing had happened and there was no sign of EM. The RA took K into the hall and they talked for 10 minutes. Apparently she had been begging EM to leave, but she just wouldn't. After hearing the rule, K went and told EM she had 5 minutes to get out or she wouldn't be allowed to live there anymore. This isn't true, but she needed to sound serious. EM got up and left to drive back to Texas, which she could have done at any moment. The real kicker of this story is that there was a B&B not even 30 yards from the building's entrance. It's pretty common to hear stories of uni kids still living with their parents, eating their food, etc. It's not very common to be the other way around. And for good reason, it's pretty weird. Unless the parent is in like really old age, they're the ones that are supposed to provide for the kids, not the other way around. I work for an airline. Before we land, the crew get an announcement from the flight deck to prepare the cabin for landing, generally about 10 minutes before we actually land. When the crew hear this, they make their own announcement to the passengers to let them know to return to their seats and the toilets are out of use. The crew then secure the cabin, make sure everyone is seated, then pass this to the flight deck to let them know it's safe to land. So the flight deck asks the crew to prepare the cabin and the crew have made their announcement. EM stands up and moves towards the bathroom with her kid. Sorry, but the toilets are closed as we will be landing shortly. My kid needs to have a quick wee. We'll be fast. This happens fairly often. Though parents know we'll be landing at some point, for some reason they assume their kid gets them extra time over everyone else. Anyway, we still have five minutes before we land and the kid is like four years old, so it should be fast. So I allow them to quickly use the toilet on the condition that it's very fast. 
Two minutes later I knock on the door and say I need you to return to your seats now. The EM shouts. Don't rush me, I'm on the toilet! Me trying to be polite. Sorry, you said it was your child that needed to use it. But now you need to return to your seat. Our toilets are tiny. How the heck is she in there sitting down with her four-year-old? Why are you bothering me while I'm in here? I said I would be fast. I look at my watch and we still have some time. So I say, you have one minute. One minute comes and I knock again. Leave me alone, I'll be right out. Sorry, this is now urgent. You need to take your seats as I warned we are minutes away from landing. I still have time to change him then. Inside WTF. Miss, you need to open the door and return to your seat now. I haven't finished changing him yet. She opens the door to the toilet and her four-year-old, big kid, is on his back on the changing table, crappy nappy on the side and naked from the waist down. Four years is too old for nappies, right? Or am I just stupid? You can get me his other clothes from my other bag. I'm just shocked. So our planes are large but crammed with seats. So the toilet is basically less than a meter away from the front row. So all the passengers can see and hear this. Probably smell it too at this stage. At this point I basically have to give up. No way can I get them back to their seats if the kid is half naked butt caked in crap. I phone the flight deck and say we can't land just now as the cabin isn't safe. Captain is ticked at me. The entire first few rows of passengers hear this and start shouting as it means like a 20 minute delay as we will have to go around. We finally get her back to her seat, all the other passengers shouting at her. She starts screaming at the other passengers to shut the F up. We have about a 15 minute wait before we can land again, during which time everyone around the EM is shouting at her and she is going nuts screaming back at them. Fun times. Captain decides to call security to the aircraft when we finally land and get to stand. Makes PA asking passengers to stay in their seats. Security board aircraft and escort the EM off with her child. She is crying hysterically and still shouting at other passengers. The other passengers when they leave are asked to give statements about what happened. The EM has been given a no fly from our airline, meaning her return flight was cancelled and I've been told by my line manager that the company supported by passenger statements are pursuing her for the cost of the aborted landing. This is just one of the many tales of jerk parents on an aircraft. After a quick Google search, apparently 18 months to 3 years is the average for getting a child out of their nappies. So I don't know if this parent is negligent or lazy. I mean maybe there's some developmental thing going on there. But in any case, she showed no consideration for the flight staff or for any of the other passengers. Me and my girlfriend is on vacation in France. And if you did not know, 14th of July is some special day in France. A lot of people are out there that night, so we thought it'd be a good idea to get a reservation at a restaurant the day before. And so we did. The next day, as we thought, it was crowded. We get to the waiter and she points to our reserved table. We go to the table and sit down. Right after, a lady comes to our table with her two kids behind her that look to be three to five. The conversation went like this. Hello, can I help you? Yes, I noticed that you have a reservation. Yeah, we thought it was a good idea to get one yesterday. I see. Well, there is no other place to eat right now. Yes. And I have two kids, so I was wondering if I could have your reservation. No, you cannot. What? But I have two kids. And you have to give it to me. Look ma'am, we went out yesterday and paid for this reservation. So it is not my problem that you have no table. You have to give it to me because I'm older and I have two kids. We don't have to do anything for you. I will call over the waiter and have you kicked out of this restaurant. For what exactly? Harassment to me and my kids. She then proceeds to call a waiter over. Yes? You have to kick these crazy people off your restaurant. For what exactly? They harassed my family and stole our reservation. We most certainly did not. We reserved this table yesterday and we did not do anything to you. Neither do we do anything to your kids. You came up to us. See waiter, they need to be banned from this restaurant. So you want me to ban them because you want this reservation? It is my reservation. All right, what is the number for the reservation? EM then turns white. I don't remember. It's girlfriend's number. Exactly, so you have to leave. No, she stole my phone to see my number and I will press charges against you. I'm sure she did. I'm going to have to ask you to leave now or I'll call the police and they will press charges against you. 
You can't! I'll call your manager to have you fired! Me, girlfriend and waiter are almost laughing at this point, but we all manage to hold it in. Waiter then pulls up some device and after two minutes of yelling and whining, security comes over and escorts them out, and last we hear from her is, I will have you arrested! And you may ask, where were her kids in all of this? They were fighting, screaming and crying. Then what I believe to be the manager apologised for the lady's noise and behaviour, and he also apologised to us. We didn't even bother to press charges. I hope to never meet her again. You know, here's the crazy thing. Even if you have kids, you can still make reservations at restaurants. Yes, it is possible. But I mean, why do that where you can just rock up and steal someone else's, right? That's so much easier. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.